Tonight, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters is defending his agency against claims of misconduct. So a citizen injured in a car crash claimed that the sheriff's office interfered with her ability to get immediate medical attention. Today, the sheriff held a news conference showing body camera footage to challenge the claims. On your side, Zach Wilcox joins us now live. And Zach, I know you had a chance to speak with our crime and safety analyst, and he watched that body camera video. What did he say, Zach? Yeah, Heather, there were three different body camera videos released from the three different officers who were there that night. Gave us a little more insight into what exactly happened, but they show very limited interaction between the JSO officers and the injured driver. That injured driver, after the press conference today, said that the allegations she's brought up happened before those videos started, but uh, the videos start with the officers walking up to the scene, or at least appear to start that way. I just want them to do what's right. Retrain them, let them know that it was wrong. Imogene King accused the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office of doing two things wrong on a December night when she crashed into the median and gashed her leg open. Number one, she said JSO used a breathalyzer on her for a DUI test, preventing paramedics from giving her medical attention. And number two, she said they yelled at her mother and prevented King from seeing her on the scene. I was accused of being drunk, and after I passed the breathalyzer test, he accused me of having to be on some drugs. Body camera video released from three officers that night shows little direct interaction with King, as Florida Highway Patrol was already there and JFRD crews walked up shortly after. Sheriff T.K. Waters claims there was no DUI investigation that night, and even if there was, they wouldn't have used a breathalyzer. JSO only conducts breath tests of adults in DUI investigations post-arrest and inside the Duval County Jail. A spokesperson with Florida Highway Patrol says a trooper was the first to the scene and to interact with King. However, that particular trooper did not have a breathalyzer in his car. As for her mother being allowed to see her, JSO officers do interact with her as they approach the scene. Do you not hear me? Did you not just leave somebody in that vehicle to get That's hit? That's my child. So get it on the road. Although there is yelling, most of it surrounds letting paramedics address the injuries and the mom moving her vehicle out of the way of traffic on I-10. They want to see their loved ones. They want to touch them. They want to talk to them. They want to do that. However, you got to allow the professionals to do what they need to do. Uh, in this case, stop the bleeding uh, and get her to the hospital as quick as possible. King refuses to get on the gurney until she talks with her mom. I need her by or I'm not going. Okay, well, that's not how this works. Well, yeah. We're in the middle go. of the interstate. I'm not Emma Jean, get in the police yeah, car. Emma Jean, get in there, get out the car. There's always two sides to every story. You can't jump the gun uh, and make allegations um, without proof and without facts. I don't have to make this stuff up. I don't have an agenda behind it. Now, I asked a local pastor who's been handling the media for the driver if it's possible it was a different agency that they had an issue with considering JSO was the last of the three agencies to arrive at the scene. He said he just knows something went wrong that night. I also asked if they're pursuing any legal action, but he didn't answer at this point. In downtown, Zach Wilcox, First Coast News, on your side.